I'm currently going to be looking at fungal and bacterial communities within a soil sample. I've weighed five grams of soil and added it to 35 mils of water. I'm going to vortex the sample for about a minute and this spreads apart the uh, soil particles and distributes evenly the communities within the soil. I'm then going to do a serial dilution um, from about 10 to the minus 1, tenfold to about 10 to the minus 7. And this should give me um, a better idea of the counts within the, within the soil sample. This is typically done aseptically in a flow hood, but uh, to make it easier for us to visualize, I'm doing it here. So I've got my autoclaved pasture by pets. And I'm going to add one mil of the soil, 10 to the zero soil solution to nine mils of distilled water. And this gives me a 10 to the minus one dilution. And I would continue along in this nature until I get to 10 to the minus seven. And then vortex each dilution, again distributing the sample. I'm then going to plate on two different types of agar, a potato dextrose agar, which is for fungal growth, and then we've got a triptych soy agar, which is for bacterial growth. I have my micropipetter, which is set at 100 microliters. I'm going to add 100 microliters of the 10 to the minus 1 dilution to each plate. And to the triptych soy agar plate. I have a spreader here in ethanol and I will put it through the flame. This burns off the ethanol and aseptically, well, sterilizes my spreader between samples so that I don't have any contamination between the samples or from outside sources. Once my spreader's cooled, I will put it through the 100 microliters of the solution, distributing it evenly across the plate. Once the solution is spread evenly, I will flip the plates so as not to get any moisture on them and put them in a 20 degree incubator or at room temperature. Um, I will leave them there for a few days and this will allow the colonies to grow. I've prepared a few plates in advance. Here's my 10 to the zero dilution and as you can see, it's a lawn of bacteria or fungal growth on the plate. It's very difficult to distinguish between the colonies. In the 10 to the minus one, it's the same situation where the plate is covered with bacteria and fungi. And then I have my 10 to the minus two, and now I can start to distinguish between the colonies and I can count. I'm looking for about 30 to 300 colonies so that I can get a, a good plate count. And uh, they, these colonies are nicely spread around so that I could actually extract some for sequencing later. So typically after plate counts, we can get an idea of the number of bacterial and fungal colonies within the soil.